أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب صدق الله العظيم سورة ألم نشرح I copy says Surah to Sharh. This says Surah Alam Nashrah. So probably then the title is from whoever typed up the book, not from the author. Makkiya, it's a Meccan Surah. Wahiya, Thamanu Ayat. It consists of eight verses. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Alam Nashrah Laka Sadirak. Did we not expand for you your chest, O Muhammad? Stafhama Anin Tifa Isharh. Ala Wajil in Kaab. In this verse, Allah asks Muhammad about the negation of his chest being expanded in a way of objecting to that or denying that, in a way of denying that. And so then, it's a rhetorical question that is confirming that his chest was expanded. Did we not expand your chest for you, Muhammad? So it's a question, looks like it's negating, but really it's confirming. It means we have expanded your chest for you, Muhammad. It's as if it were said, We have expanded your chest for you. So that's why in the next verse, there's a confirmation. It's not a question, it's a confirmation. And we have dropped from you your wisdom, the burden. We have dropped from you your burden. So there's a question, and then there's a confirmation. So the first one, the question, Did we not expand your chest for you, O Muhammad? And we have dropped for you your burden. That second one. That's a statement. That's not a question. So how is it valid to connect that statement to that question in front of it? Because really the question is also for confirming. It's like it's a statement. The question is like it's a statement. It's a rhetorical question. Did we not expand your chest for you? It means we did expand your chest for you. And we dropped for you or dropped from you the burden. The meaning is that, oh Muhammad, we have expanded your chest for you by the knowledges that we have imparted on you, yani by the knowledges that we have installed in your heart. Well, hikam and the wisdoms, hatta wasi'ahu muman nubuah, so that your heart would become able to bear the uh, the uh, burdens of prophethood, the challenge, the responsibilities of prophethood, so that your heart would be uh, would have enough room to accommodate the responsibilities of prophethood. Yani, it means we we gave you the aptitude, O Muhammad. We made you someone who is able to carry out this task. 
because this task of his prophethood, that's not something that anybody, anybody could do. I couldn't do something like that. Yani, some manager at McDonald's couldn't do something like that. This needs very, uh, this needs for a person to have the aptitude. And we made your chest have the expansiveness to be able to handle the responsibility of calling the humans and genies. Because that takes a lot. It takes a lot of knowledge, intelligence, and patience, and manners, and etc. And we have removed from your heart, O Muhammad, the constriction and the tightness. That tightness and constriction that would be in a heart when one is blind and when one is ignorant. It was reported about Al Hassan Al Bisri that he said the meaning of this. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Did we not expand your chest? Did we not expand for you your chest? Is your chest was filled with wisdom and knowledge. Wa wa da'na anka wizrak. And we dropped from you your burden. Wa khaffafna anka a'ba an nubuwa. We made light for you the, the duty of prophethood. We made you someone who is able to bear that. And we made it achievable for you that you would be able to administer this task. And it was said that this burden that the ayah speaks of is some slip that came from the Prophet ﷺ that is not known what is that in particular, but it is something. And whatever that slip is that Allah pardoned for the Prophet, according to this saying, this slip that it's not known in particular what it is, it was his not doing the best thing, although he did something good. And so he left out doing something better for something good. He says, and if he says, the prophets are uh, addressed with something like this. Uh, something would be said to a prophet for doing something like that for doing something good, although he could have done something better. That's what Imam an nasafi says here. I don't have any commentary here. And so Allah is dropping that burden from the Prophet is Allah is forgiving the Prophet for that. And the wizr, it means a heavy burden. A heavy burden, so, yani something very heavy. Al himlu al thaqil, a heavy uh, something that's heavy that's carried. But here, let me remind you about what's the correct position that prophets are divinely protected from committing blasphemy or from committing major sins or from committing small sins that display low character. And if they were to commit such a small sin that does not display low character, they would be immediately guided to repent from that sin before anyone would follow them. So that's the strong and reliable saying. And what's other than this? Prophets are not protected from that. So what would that be? Such as doing something disliked Prophets are not impeccable from doing something disliked. Our Shaykh taught us that it is possible that a prophet would do something makruh and that he would do that for teaching his nation that it's not haram. 
it's possible that the Prophet would do something that's disliked to teach his nation that it's not haram. So disliked matters are not impossible for the prophets to do. And as for those who say that a prophet would not fall into something disliked, our Sheikh says that's extremism. To believe that a prophet would not do anything disliked, and he's divinely protected from even doing something disliked, Sheikh says that's extremism and extremism is forbidden. So we say a prophet could possibly commit a small sin that does not display low character, and then he would immediately repent before anyone follows him. And also it's possible that a prophet could do something that's disliked. It's not impossible. It's also possible that a prophet would do something permissible that's not the best thing to be done. Like what Anesipi said here, that's possible. That a prophet would do something permissible that's not the best thing to be done. And then Allah may reveal something to that prophet for doing what he did when he didn't do what's best. He did something permissible but didn't do what's best. Then Allah Ta'ala could reveal something to him about that. Like what we took from Surat Abbas. Abbas Awatawalla. He scowled, the Prophet that is, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he turned away. When the blind man came to him. So if you remember that, this is one of those cases. When the Prophet scowled at the blind man, that means he brings his eyebrows together in disapproval and turned away from the blind man. That was not haram, but was better for him not to do. And so Allah revealed that to the Prophet. So I said all of that just to maybe give some clarity to this statement of Imam al Nasafi here. So here's the ayah. And we wadana. Wadaa means put. Put. Wadana, we put. I was saying though, we dropped Anka from you. We put from you. As if to say, we took away from you. Wizrak. Your heavy burden. Your wizard. Your heavy burden. So and Nasifi says, this means that Allah Ta'ala lightens for, Pro for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the duties of prophethood. That means, I mean by that, uh, he made the Prophet able to do that. He made the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam able to carry out what a Prophet needs to do. That's not something anyone could do. Didn't you see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they moved to Medina, he even displayed the prowess of a military genius? So who can do things like this? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was made equipped. That's here the first explanation that Nasafi gave for the ayah. And then he gave another. He said, Waqil, and it was said. This heavy burden that the ayah speaks of, this wizard, it is some slip that whatever it is, it's not known what it is in particular. But it is abandoning a better thing for something that's still good. And the prophets would be addressed for doing something like that. That's what Nasafi says. And Allah knows best. That heavy burden that weighed on your back, that weighs on your back. It's weighty on your back. That burden was so heavy on his back that he could hear the squeaking of his back. He could hear the squeaking of his back under that heavy burden. 
Uh, here, he doesn't mention if this is a literal squeak or it's not literal squeak. And I don't have any commentary there. But uh, the basic point, though, is known that this was, there was something, there was a facility that Allah gave to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah gave Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advantages. He expanded the Prophet's chest and gave him vast knowledge and wisdom and gave him supreme intelligence alayhi salatu was salam and he also gave the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the aptitude for carrying out the duties of prophethood so there was something that allah lightened from the prophet something that had the potential for extreme heaviness this was removed from the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and we raised for you your mentioning. And we raised for you your mentioning, O Muhammad. And what is this elevation of Prophet Muhammad's mentioning? What does that mean? The elevation of his mentioning, we raised, we elevated for you, your mentioning. It is for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be mentioned when God is mentioned. Fi kalimati shahada, in the shahada, wal adhan, and the adhan, wal iqamati, wal khutab, and in the iqama, and in the speeches, what tashahud, and in the tashahud when you pray, and in more than one spot in the Quran, when Allah says, Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. That means believe in them. And anyone who obeys Allah and His Messenger, dot, dot, dot. وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَحَقُّ أَن يُرْضُوهُ And Allah and His Messenger are more deserving and يُرْضُوهُ So those are examples of the Messenger being mentioned with Allah and so by that His mentioning has been elevated and it was said that that includes the angels mentioning the Prophet in the heavens وَفِي تَسْمِيَتِهِ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَنَبِيَ اللَّهِ And his mentioning was elevated by being named Messenger of God and Prophet of God. وَمِنْهُ ذِكْرُهُ فِي كُتُبِ الْأَوَّلِينَ And also, he was mentioned in the earlier revealed books. وَفَائِدَةُ لَكَ مَا عُرِفَ فِي طَرِيقَةِ الْإِبْحَامِ وَفَائِدَةُ لَكَ مَا عُرِفَ فِي طَرِيقَةِ الْإِبْحَامِ وَالْإِضَاحِ لِأَنَّهُ يُفَمُ بِقَوْلِهِ أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ أَنَّ ثَمَّ مَشْرُوحًا ثُمَّ أَوْضَحْ بِقَوْلِهِ صَدِرَكْ Let me just say, here Allah says to the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ Did we not expand? Laka for you. So up until there, it's known, it's understood that something has been expanded. There is something expanded. And then, so yani, there's something ambiguous there until it appears. Sadirak alam nashrah laka sadirak. Did we not expand for you? Your chest, and did we not put for you? So there's something put, your 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 heavy burden, and we raised for you what what has been elevated. Your mentioning. In yusra. Indeed, with the difficulty, 
is in ease. Indeed, with the difficulty is an ease. Ay inna ma'a shiddati lati anta fiha min min muqasati bala'il mushrikeen meaning that indeed with the difficulty that you experience from the harshness of the pagans dealing with the pagans there is an ease by my making you dominant over them until you defeat them and it was said that the pagans used to dispraise the messenger of Allah and the believers for being poor because they weren't people of the dunya. Until the Prophet thought that until the Prophet وسلم, thought that they didn't want to become Muslims because the Muslims were poor. So that it was the poverty that was repulsive to those pagans. And so Allah reminded the Prophet about the great endowments that he was given. And then he said, Indeed, with the difficulty is an ease. It's as if God said to Muhammad, We have given you all that we have given you. So do not despair from the generosity of God. For indeed, the difficulty that you all are in, the difficulty that you all are experiencing, along with it, there is ease. And the ayah brings the word ma'a that means with. Indeed, with the difficulty is an ease. Why with? Meaning, because really the meaning is after. So why with? To extend, to explain just how close the ease is to the difficulty. The ease comes after the difficulty, but it's so close that the ayah says it's with the difficulty. To give more consolation. This ayah it's, expresses it like this to give more consolation. And to strengthen the hearts. وَإِنَّمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ عِنْدَ نُزُولِهَا لَنْ يَغْلِبَ عُسْرٌ يُسْرَيْنِ And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he only said that, يعني, when this ayah was revealed, the Prophet said, indeed, one difficulty will not overcome two eases. Yani, you won't get like that. One difficulty will not overcome two eases. لِأَنَّ الْعُسْرَ أُعِيدَ مَعْرِفًا مُعَرَّفًا فَكَانَ وَاحِدًا Because لأن المعرفة إذا أعيدت معرفة كانت الثانية عين الأولى واليسر أعيد 
نكيرة والنكيرة إذا أعيدت نكيرة كانت الثانية عين الأولى. Uh, so here the ayah says فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا for indeed with the difficulty is an ease. Indeed, with the difficulty is an ease. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, one difficulty will not overcome two eases. Why? Because in the ayah, this is two ayahs. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى The difficulty was made definite. Indeed, with the difficulty is an ease. And the ease was made indefinite. An ease, some ease, an ease, not the ease. So indeed with the difficulty is some ease, an ease. So the difficulty is definite, but the ease is indefinite. And then it was repeated. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Indeed, with the difficulty is an ease. So grammatically what happened here, when the difficulty was mentioned the first time, definite, and then it was repeated, also definite, that means that it's the same difficulty. The same difficulty was mentioned twice because you said V. So what if you said, I saw the mailman at the corner. I saw the mailman across the street, across the street. So when I said the mailman twice, it was the same one. So like that here. Indeed, with the difficulty is an ease. With the difficulty is an ease. But the ease was mentioned indefinitely. And then it was repeated. And so when the indefinite one was repeated, it was a different one. So if I said, I saw a mailman at the corner. I saw a mailman cross the street. Now it's not the same one. Uh, so that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, two, uh, one difficulty will not overcome two easies. فصار المعنى إن العسر إن مع العسر يسرين فصار المعنى إن مع العسر يسرين and so the meaning is that with the difficulty there are two eases قال أبو معاذ أبو معاذ said you call it would be said so here's an example إن مع الأمير غلاما indeed with the prince is a servant boy. Inna ma'al amiri ghulama. Indeed, with the prince is a servant boy. Fal amiru wahidun wa ma'ahu ghulama. If you said that, it means there's one prince but two servant boys. Wa idha qaad. And if someone were to say, Inna ma'a amiri ghulama. Inna ma'al amiri al-ghulama. Indeed, with a prince is a servant boy. Indeed, with the prince is the servant boy. Then it's the same prince and the same servant boy. Wa idha qil, and if it were said, Inna ma'a amiri al-ghulama, wa inna ma'a amiri al-ghulama. Indeed, with a prince is a servant boy. And indeed, with a prince is a servant boy. Then these are two princes and two servant boys. That's how it was documented in Sharh al-Ta'wilat. So when you are finished, then get up. That's literal translation. It means, O oh Muhammad, when you have finished calling the creations, then exert the effort in worshiping your Lord. 
because the prophet used to do his own worships. He used to pray and used to make dhikr. He used to make dua. وعن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما and it was reported about Ibn Abbas may Allah accept his and his father's deeds that the meaning is فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ مِنْ صَلَاتِكَ if you have finished your prayer فَاجْتَهِدْ فِي الدُّعَى then exert effort in supplication وَاخْتُلِفَ أَنَّهُ قَبْلَ السَّلَامِ أَوْ بَعْدَهِ and there's a difference about whether this is before saying the salam or after the salam. And how does this relate to the prior verses? So if you want to understand the Quran, you have to understand how the verses of the Quran are connected. Sometimes you might not see the relationship between them. And some scholars are better at showing that than others. Imam an nasafi has a nice uh, habit of, as they say, connecting the dots, showing you how the verses are relevant to each other or relevant in the surah. So he says, what makes this relate to the prior verses? Is that when God listed for Muhammad his prior endowments, and also his coming promises, he then encouraged Muhammad to be appreciative and to exert effort in worship and to exert himself in that and to uh, keep his worships connected and not to and not to leave any of his time empty from worship, devoid of worship. So that when he finishes one worship, he will just follow it with another. He's saying this ayah means that uh, after Allah Ta'ala told the Prophet about, you know, he reminded him about the endowments that he has. He then encouraged Muhammad to appreciate that and then to get busy with worship consistently and to exert himself and to keep the worships connected one after the next and that he doesn't leave any time open without good deeds. As soon as he finishes doing one worship, he should just follow it up with another. And to your Lord, of your Lord, be desirous. Make your wanting to be and uh, wanting the endowments of your Lord, the blessings of your Lord, the uh, the givings of your Lord, and status from your Lord. Make that your goal in particular and don't ask for something other than his generosity relying on him and on Allah let the believers rely so ask Allah from his generosity ask him for what you want ask him for what you need Allah answers the dua Make dua in the last third of the night. SubhanAllah, Allah answers the dua. Wallahu a'lam, Allah knows best. That's the end of the surah.